march is on. The steady march of a peacetime army to new frontiers of electrical progress, to new victories in General Electric's never-ending quest for better ways of living, creating new comforts and conveniences undreamed of a generation ago. Men, money, machines, knowledge, vision, research, carefully, painstakingly perfecting so that the things which make for better living may be more plentiful and less expensive. It is thrilling indeed to know that this is General Electric's contribution to the world of today and the better world of tomorrow, to man's mastery of his destiny. What is electricity, Grandpa? Ah, little girl, you've asked quite a question. What is electricity? What is electricity? Even the famed research scientists at the General Electric House of Magic do not exactly know. And yet, here this very force, which is so mysterious, is chained and harnessed, put to work in myriad ways, as mankind's most obedient and inexpensive servant. The man who established the GE Research Laboratory, Dr. Willis R. Whitney says, discoveries and inventions are not terminals. They are fresh starting points from which we can soar to new knowledge. Dr. Irving Langmuir, whose research in surface chemistry won the Nobel Prize. Just recently, his researches have led to an exciting new discovery, invisible glass. Another step in General Electric's march to new horizons. And Dr. E. F. W. Alexanderson, author of a host of major contributions to electrical progress. He developed the alternator, which made possible reliable transoceanic wireless communication. Where his researches will lead tomorrow, only time will tell. Men like Dr. Albert Hull, constantly studying too, a vacuum tube must have a perfect seal, a perfect union of glass and metal, thus giving assurance that it will continue to operate in its delicate, though vital task. Dr. W.D. Coolidge, who developed ductile tungsten for lamp filaments, thereby making one of the truly great contributions of all time to lighting. He is also famous for the Coolidge tube, the heart of modern X-ray. Dr. Saul Dushman is noted for his studies of new light sources, among which is the sodium vapor lamp. His researches with the photoelectric cell make this sound picture which you are now seeing possible. Better light for better sight has brought better seeing to millions. The tireless work and experiments of the science of seeing by Dr. Lukish protect the vision of the young and preserve the seeing of all. It may amaze you to know that GE scientists at Neela Park are conducting exhaustive experiments just to determine the effects that adequate and inadequate lighting have on the heart, the lungs, the general well-being of the human body. Such researches have made Neela Park known as the University of Light, which has given American homes today 80% more light for a dollar than 15 years ago. From among the most promising graduates of leading engineering universities will come the general electric research experts of the future. Each year, a new group starts. In 46 years, approximately 16,000 students have been graduated from this test course. The majority have remained with General Electric because General Electric provides an ideal environment for the development of special talents. Who can tell to what greater heights their achievements will lift the standards of better living? These men will carry on tomorrow the work started by Edison, Thomson, Steinmetz, 
and will follow Whitney, Coolidge, Langmuir, and their associates. Tool makers, die makers, machinists, pattern makers of long experience teach these young men and pass on to them their technical knowledge and practical experience. Thus, the traditional and world-renowned reputation for accuracy is upheld and carried on. Big jobs need big men, skilled men that know how. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been put into General Electric plants and equipment. Hundreds of thousands of training hours have been given to young men like these that this equipment may produce the finest results. Factories, Schenectady, Lynn, Philadelphia, Fort Wayne, Erie, Pittsfield, Cleveland, Warren, Youngstown, Oakland, Ontario, Chicago, Newark, Providence, St. Louis, Boston, Buffalo, Niles, Bloomfield, New York, New Kensington, Bridgeport. It is almost impossible to visualize the tremendous manufacturing and research facilities of General Electric. As symbolized in the foundry, we see that electrical knowledge is not enough. Knowledge from almost every science and craft known to man must be used in order to produce highly complex electrical apparatus, in order to make motors that run for years, appliances that have established new standards of efficiency and long life, turbines upon which the pulsing life of great cities depend, metallurgy, physics, chemistry, weaving, finishing, stamping, welding, are but a few of which wide and accurate knowledge is necessary. The electric furnace. It was originated in miniature, in GE research laboratories to heat minute quantities of materials used in experiments. It proved so successful and economical in controlling exact temperatures and thus keeping quality uniform that it has taken the place of older types of furnaces wherever high uniform quality is sought. This is General Electric's own electric furnace, controlling one phase of GE quality. Oftentimes, these huge masses of casting are so large that days are required for the cooling process. General Electric casts in some of the largest production molds known to industry. After cooling, these tremendous steel castings are manicured carefully and painstakingly. The guide bars are cut off with torches, the scale chipped away, revealing the clean, perfect mold underneath. The surfaces are thoroughly cleaned with a sandblast. Notice the helmet-like complete protection given the workman. In all operations like this, safety of the worker is the prime consideration. A hundred tons of pounding, pulsating rhythm, yet humanly controlled to exact specified requirements. A main thrust bearing of a huge turbine being beaten into shape and to amazingly accurate specifications. Imagine men and machines, 
capable of combining the skill and force necessary to bend this tremendous steel slab into a perfect arc, accurate to one thirty-second of an inch, and with no second guesses allowed. That slab of metal is white hot. Even the asbestos clothes of the workman smoke as he gets close. The bending must be done right the first time or the whole expensive, tedious process of fabricating the slab begun all over. Motioning with his hands to the control operators, he is beckoning for perfection. The largest machine shop in the world five stories high and almost half a mile long. Many of the large turbines at Schenectady require two or three years to build. Their huge size indicates how tremendously difficult are the manufacturing problems involved. Add to this the fact that they are among the most complicated of all manufactured products and you will understand that building a turbine is equivalent to manufacturing a precision watch on the scale of a battleship. This huge turbine rotor, for instance, weighs tons and must be so finely balanced that its tremendous mass spinning at high speed will set up a minimum of vibration. Otherwise, it would fly to pieces. Balancing to eliminate destructive vibration is quite a procedure. But once statically and dynamically balanced, these huge turbines operate with just a singing hum. Machining a mass of metal as huge as this turbine part and doing it to precision tolerances is the result of excellent workmanship plus the finest of tools and machines. Skilled hands assembling a complex unit known as a generator. Here again, knowledge, skill and people. And no less complicated are the generator stators which trained hands of these men fashion so precisely. Each part you see here has to be made by hand, assembled by hand. Here is put the accumulated knowledge of scientists, designers, manufacturing men, using skilled, interested workmen. General electric devices are built to stay built, to keep running without trouble. Not only the huge prime movers behind the socket, but also the appliances ahead of the socket. Because of the infinite care taken in building both the generator rotor and the stator, the two fit together with microscopic accuracy. Think of applying micrometer precision tests down to the thickness of a cigarette paper to products of this size. Because GE knows how to build tremendously bigger and more complicated electrical devices than the general public buys, it naturally follows that they know how to build better electrical products for the home. Typical of the never-ending search for new and better ways, here is General Electric's mercury turbine. A few years ago, three pounds of coal were needed to generate one kilowatt hour of electricity. Today, less than a pound of coal is enough. Men again, experience, vision. Before any GE product assumes its permanent shape in metal, accurate plans must be drawn to full scale from which wood patterns are reproduced. The final product may be built of the newest electrical alloy, but in its first recognizable shape, it was fashioned of man's oldest building material, wood. Ceramics, too, play an important part in the electrical industry as insulators. Their shapes and sizes are as numerous as the various kinds of electrical products. These tiny insulators give a lifetime of service in GE electric irons. Just as much care and engineering are necessary to make this tiny insulation right as for the large ones. It is just as important that Mrs. America has an electric iron that does not fail as it is to have turbines that do not fail. 
This high tension insulator is here being roughly shaped by machine. It's only a piece of very special pottery, but it will safely carry 22,000 volts. Watch those hands. They're the hands of an artist, a third generation General Electric craftsman whose father and grandfather before him also gave of their old world art in making General Electric insulators to the highest standards of craftsmanship. Huge insulators like this one, getting its finishing touches on a precision lathe, are used in carrying the huge electrical loads at Boulder Dam. Breakdown test for finished insulators. They must withstand an electric load four times more than they will ever have to carry. Measuring electricity calls for instruments built with a delicacy and accuracy not even known in watches. GE meters and measuring instruments are built to measure accurately one one millionth of a volt. A fine watch may lose 10 seconds a week and still be thoroughly satisfactory. But these electrical instruments must be absolutely accurate. In the research laboratory at Schenectady, in its own vault, is a device which is to electrical measuring instruments what Greenwich time is to all nations. Delicate work obviously needs delicate hands. Lazy coils of copper. Copper wire about to become veins and arteries of the nation's electrical system and its myriad electrical appliances. Drawn through intricate dyes, growing constantly smaller and smaller in diameter, until at the end, 25 miles of copper wire will wind itself on a single spool. General Electric Research has revolutionized the process of applying insulation. For instance, spun glass on wire. No maypole dance was ever so complicated as this combination of a mechanical Big Apple and the Russian Hopa. The eye cannot follow the intricate workings of this amazing machine as it weaves the outer case of General Electric insulated wire. Notice the complexity of electrical apparatus and the painstaking processes required for even the simplest things, such as braiding the wire and applying the paper covering. There is no more amazing evidence of how skillfully it is possible to build complicated electrical products than a glance at the way motors are built to precise tolerances. The inner core is ground to mirror-like smooths. And the clever fingers of skilled women fashion the insulating coils. The uniformity with which these operations are performed show upon the testing block from which every General Electric motor must graduate before going out into the world to earn its way.
General Electric is, first of all, an organization of people, trained, highly skilled people, proud of their jobs and of the particular product they help to build. These craftsmen are applying the same skill to the making of washing machines that their fellow workers apply to the building of huge turbines or generators. They realize that building electric appliances for American homes is just as important a job as building large electric apparatus for American industry. Electricity has made life easier for the workmen by taking over the back-breaking tasks in the factory. Through the medium of electric appliances, it is now making life easier and happier for the workman's wife and family by taking over the back-breaking tasks of housework, the jobs of washing, ironing, cooking, cleaning, heating, to name but a few. Fifteen years ago, electric appliances were practically unknown. Lighting was about the only service which electricity performed in our homes. Today, electric appliances are sold by the millions each year, and the drudgery of housekeeping is rapidly becoming a thing of the past. Women are keeping younger by living electrically, by letting electricity do the work, while they take their rightful places in the lives of their families and their communities. In 15 years, Electricity has created this great new appliance industry employing thousands of people. The history of every electric appliance has been similar, vastly improved and reduced in cost year by year until a whole new industry has been created and new comforts and conveniences made available to American people. At the same time, through constant improvements in the huge turbines, generators, and other apparatus that produce electricity, the cost of electricity itself has been reduced year by year. This decrease has made it possible to use more and more electricity in the factories producing electric appliances and other manufactured products. In addition, the cost of operation of these appliances has grown smaller and smaller, making the benefits of electricity available to more and more people. Remember the first old-fashioned electric ranges? How long they took to boil water and cook a meal? Yet they cost several times as much as the electric ranges being sold today. Year after year, since those early ranges were introduced, general electric scientists, engineers and craftsmen have struggled with the problems of making them better and more useful to the housewife, less expensive to buy and to operate, so that millions of people could afford them and because they succeeded in producing a vastly improved range at a fraction of its original cost, thousands of American housewives now cook electrically, and thousands of workmen are employed in making electrons. At the Schenectady plant, expert workmen operate this row of huge presses a city block long each machine embedded in 20 feet of concrete. These workmen are forming the compressor cases for refrigerators. These huge presses can exert 1,200 tons of pressure, yet so responsive is each giant machine that the operator could place a watch between its jaws and crack the crystal without damaging the watch mechanism. Testing refrigerator parts, looking for bubbles. For bubbles mean leaks, and leaks mean defects.
precision parts machined to unbelievable degrees of accuracy and always inspection and test, test and inspection. Here in these dustproof air-conditioned assemblies, deft hands fit these precision-made parts to form the compressor mechanism of a hermetically sealed refrigerator unit. Other craftsmen operate the evacuating wheel, creating by far the highest vacuum produced in any modern product. A forest of sheet metal greets the visitor to the new and modern Erie plant where refrigerator cabinets are made, one of the largest under one roof factory buildings in the world. Skilled welders literally sew the steel cabinets together producing the highest type of construction. Mass production of refrigerators in order to keep prices low and quality high calls for the finest conveying systems engineering skill can devise. Through them, quality can be strictly maintained and at the same time, tremendous quantities produced. Refrigerator doors, formed, finished, filled with insulation, strong and solid as a safe. The main assembly line at Erie gives you still a better picture of how mass production methods make it possible to produce all steel cabinets of heavy gauge metal at low cost. pace is steady and not too fast so that each worker can give sufficient time and care to each operation. All parts must fit exactly, must pass the most rigid inspection. Even in the warehouse there are tricks of production that help to reduce cost. Each crated machine passes in front of an electric eye, which measures the width of the machine, and then automatically shunts it to the correct section of the giant warehouse. No story of the refrigerator would be complete without reference to the grand old fellow, Chris Steenstrip, the father of the hermetically sealed refrigerator. He has probably contributed more to the art of electric refrigeration than any man living. Yes, sir, that must be good. At Bridgeport, the work on radio goes on to new achievements. Here, too, engineers are advancing the new art of television. Many of radio's basic discoveries are now making television possible. Who knows what television holds in store? A new ability to see beyond the horizon. A new industry with jobs for hundreds of engineers, thousands of skilled workmen, artists, salesmen, and many other professions. Because of these latent possibilities, General Electric is striving to overcome the problems involved in launching this new endeavor. In the last 60 years, electricity, by bringing higher living standards, more leisure, more comforts and conveniences, in short, by bringing living, has benefited the lives of all of them, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. There is no one whose life has not been enriched by the ever-increasing use of electricity in its countless applications. General Electric is dedicated to this service to mankind. And so, the march goes on. The steady march of scientists, engineers, and craftsmen 
to new frontiers of electrical progress, to new victories in the never-ending quest for better living. Day by day, their advances into the unknown make electricity more useful in creating more goods for more people at less cost, in producing better living for each and every one.